At its heart, Minecraft is a game where people's creativity can flourish. This is why much of the content added is engineered to fire up our imagination. It's unique and enjoyable, but doesn't force people into thinking a certain way. In fact, Minecraft seems to have no lore at first, there's no dialogue or books explaining its history or content, because the point is for the players to create their own story, and the scraps of lore we can glean from the game can lead to millions of stories. I've coined the term quasi-lore to describe these. Quasi means almost or resembling, so quasi-lore is not quite lore, just hints and clues. By attempting to make connections between Minecraft's pieces of quasi-lore, we can think of new concepts for mods that slip neatly into Minecraft's theme, while still leaving enough, or even creating more, quasi-lore for players to build on. Quasi-lore is everywhere in Minecraft. A new mob, block, or even crafting recipe can prompt us to wonder why it exists and start to think of things in a similar vein. For example, prior to 1.9, the only use for gas tears was as a brewing ingredient for regeneration potions. But then, the end crystal crafting recipe was introduced, which included a gas tear. Since end crystals regenerate the ender dragon's health and are also used in resurrecting it, the idea of regeneration being tied to ghasts, or at least their tears, was reinforced. There are plenty of these small connections in Minecraft. Water has ties to preservation. Explosions do not destroy blocks underwater, mining is slower, and the Elder Guardian gives mining fatigue. Both water and preservation are also strongly tied to loyalty. Drowned protect their old home, the ocean ruins. Guardians guard their monuments, and the water-themed trident has an enchantment called loyalty. So, how can we use these themes? Let's start simple. A crafting recipe for end portal frames. If end portals and their frames were breakable like nether portals, craftable end portal frames would allow people to build their own portals wherever they like, allowing easy access to the end. But how should it be made? Let's have a look at the block. It seems to be made mostly out of end stone, with a turquoise pattern on the top and a dark hole in the middle. We could select dark prismarine for the turquoise pattern, since it has themes of loyalty like other underwater blocks, and the two colours are very close. Pairing this with end stone would make the result loyal to the end, but it wouldn't necessarily be a portal. For that, we'll need obsidian, since it is used to make nether portals, ender chests and respawn anchors, we can assume it can channel some form of interdimensional energy. Let's put it in the middle to account for the dark hole, and voila, a recipe for end portal frames. Speaking of the end, it too has interesting quasi lore despite its barrenness. Instead of a sun, everywhere has a constant light level of 3, and its fauna are so alien that water, one of the most important substances for life, hurts endermen and causes shulkers to teleport. The texture for endstone is also inverted cobblestone. According to the Mobest theory, an official guide to Minecraft mobs, endermen have large brains, may pick up blocks as a form of play or communication, and appear to worship the ender dragon, which is odd since when the ender dragon is defeated, you get the advancement free the end. Nothing in the end has changed, apart from easy access to the outer end, so maybe you're simply freeing up the outer end for exploration. Additionally, a group of endermen is called a haunting, endermen have inverted colour vision, the sounds they make are reversed and distorted speech, and they also spawn in the nether and overworld, further implying they can teleport between dimensions. The Mabestory suggests that pumpkins may have some significance in the end, because when worn by a player, they can look at endermen without provoking him. The big plan, for Endermite's Dinnerbone Explained to the Minecon panel, is also reinforced by the Mobest theory, which suggests that they are trans-dimensional parasites from a dimension that Endermen used to teleport, explaining why Endermen hate them. Curiously, Endermites still count as an arthropod in the game. According to Jeb, the Chorus plant was named from the perspective of an adventurer discovering the alien plant, after the sound it makes when it grows. Finally, the end city architecture looks similar to the Chorus plant, and the shape of a shulker bullet looks similar to the conduit. There are many ways to expand on this information, but what intrigues me is the pumpkin significance. I always thought wearing a pumpkin would prevent Enderman aggros by covering the player's face, but the mob story suggests something a little more magical, which isn't entirely out of the question. Pumpkins are also used to build snow and iron golems. Maybe when the player carves a face into a pumpkin, they're giving it a personality and an identity, which the pumpkin's magic grows into a natural spirit that animates the body, and its significance 
is due to its contrast with the alien end. Because the end is so alien, it's difficult to come up with ideas for it, but we can attempt to extrapolate from existing creatures and properties. The shulkers and endermen can teleport, shulker bullets cause you to levitate, and the elytra allows you to fly. We could build on these by adding a mob that helps you cross the end islands, whether by flight or teleportation. Or, a flying mob that turns invisible when hurt, encouraging the use of spectral arrows. The aesthetic design of such additions would also need to be different from the overworld or nether. They could be based off their functionality, such as a mob using a large gas pocket to levitate, or be inspired by other aliens in popular culture, especially eldritch looking ones, as long as they end up looking and feeling as alien as the rest of the end. Not only does water have a relationship with the end, it is also connected to energy. Guardians fire laser beams and the trident can be enchanted with channeling, which causes it to summon lightning during storms. Lightning is a strange force in itself. It spawns skeleton horses, changes the colours and by proxy the properties of mushrooms, converts villagers to witches, pigs to zombify piglins, and charges creepers, whose explosions cause some mobs to drop their heads. This mechanic alone has plenty of potential additions. For example, lightning striking a non-overworld mob like the Strider could summon a new boss. Guardians are also quite an intriguing species. The Mobestiary says they are hollow with no internal organs and supposes that they are a carnivore since they drop fish. However, in game they only attack squids and the player. They can also survive out of water, suggesting they are less of a living creature and more of a golem. This link could inspire a form of wireless redstone with lasers. There could be angled prismarine mirrors to reflect these, allowing for some interesting puzzle opportunities. Perhaps you could even apply these to your shield to direct a guardian's beam back at them. Next, we'll look at the newly updated nether. There's a popular theory that the nether is below the overworld, and walking one block in the nether is equivalent to eight blocks in the overworld because the nether is closer to the centre of the world. However, the devs have said that the nether is not below the overworld, the 8 to 1 ratio was inspired by the Wheel of Time book series, and the advancement, we need to go deeper, is a reference to the movie Inception where deeper doesn't refer to physical altitude. There's also the advancement subspace bubble in reference to this mechanic, further disproving the theory. From the mobestuary, we know that ghasts are mostly filled with gas, and that blaze rods smell of sulfur and contain large amounts of energy that allow the blaze to fly and generate fire. In game, hoglins are repelled by wart fungus since they hate the smell, but striders can be led around with a wart fungus on a stick. Striders also slightly resemble ghasts, what with the sombre expression, the lines on their back, and the lack of distinction between their head and body. Speaking of ghasts, there's also an advancement for rescuing a ghast by bringing it back to the overworld, and also, they are not classified as undead. Could the ghasts have its origins in the overworld? On Minecraft's website, piglins are confirmed to have killed striders for the string on their crossbows, and the nether update page states that piglins mined all the netherite, leaving only ancient debris. But piglins today seem to love gold more than anything. They won't attack players wearing it, unless the player is also mining gold or looking in a chest. They'll barter nether resources for gold ingots, and also build it into their bastions. It is probably their bastion, given the Those the Days advancement, and the snouts chiseled into the blackstone. They also like bells, suggesting that they are made from gold, despite not having a crafting recipe. Maybe only the villagers know how to craft them. What properties does gold have? Well, it's shiny, but it also augments apples, carrots, and melons, providing access to absorption, night vision, invisibility, harming, and healing, not to mention curing zombie villagers. Given that piglins hate wither skeletons and flee from soul fire, it's entirely possible that they hoard gold in an effort to prevent themselves from being zombified. And brutes are there to protect the gold in the bastion, so they won't be swayed by gold. Despite there being zombified piglins in the nether, the only way to zombify hoglins and piglins in game is to take them to the overworld. Maybe the hoglins know more about it, since they avoid nether portals. The plot thickens when we know that zombified piglins are not called zombie piglins for a reason, but until we find out, we can come up with our own theories. For example, if we wanted to craft a totem of undying, we could use gold for its antiseptic properties, a carved pumpkin for its natural spirit, and a place to put the emerald eyes, and gas tears for the regeneration. So once you die, the pumpkin spirit refuels your life force, the gas tears heal you, and the gold augments you momentarily. 
Whether or not that's overpowered is a different story. Not only can Quasi-Law be formed by connecting two parts of the game, it can also be dreamt up by asking questions. Who built the jungle and desert pyramids? Why are there ruined nether portals dotting the landscape? Why do the mine shafts contain unmined ore? And why were they abandoned? Why do creepers blow up whenever they meet a player? Why is the advancement for defeating the wither called the beginning? Of course, these questions can be answered from a developmental point of view. For example, creepers were the result of an era when modeling pigs, where the height and length values on the body were mixed up. But in universe, many of these questions remain unsolved. This is a good thing though, having no answers allows us to make our own, and many people do. One only needs to look at the countless theories on YouTube and Reddit. Many of these theories attempt to explain the undead. There's a lot of variation within them. Zombified piglins are immune to fire. Zombies are easily shaped by the environment, i.e. husks and drowned. Phantoms are physical manifestations caused by insomnia. And zoglins attack everything in their sight. But something curious is the undead's relationship with chickens. Baby zombified piglins and baby zombies are able to ride and control chickens, which will not lay eggs. The Mabestery suggests chickens are a spy for dark forces. That could definitely be an interesting idea to explore in a mod. This would also explain why stray cats attack chickens, since phantoms and creepers are both scared of them. And cats bring back phantom membranes as a gift for the player, implying that the cat hunts phantoms while the player is asleep, which may explain why phantoms are afraid of cats. Anyway, the undead in general have some interesting properties. The effects of harming and healing potions are reversed. They are immune to poison and regeneration. The wither won't attack them, and ghasts, curiously. And they burn in the sun, apart from the husk and zombified piglin. It's also worth noting that all the drowned used to be zombies from this Minecraft video. And undead seem to interact with water, interestingly. Both drowned and strays have glowing eyes. But what if we are able to turn undead ourselves? Perhaps we could craft a wither skull with some blackstone to make a totem that does just that upon death. You'd gain all the properties of the undead, plus your gameplay would change. Instead of food healing you, XP would, like the Mending Enchantment. This would encourage you to make like your new undead friends, by frequently killing, or doing anything else that grants XP. Since it would heal your health instead of your hunger, it could also provide an alpha-like experience. If you want to go back to the overworld without burning in the sun, you could drink a fire resistance potion, only travel by night, or eat a golden apple to cure yourself. A nice way to apply the existing undead mechanics to create a new experience for the player. Zombies attack and zombify villages, but not illagers or pillagers. Maybe this is because the illagers are not fully alive, the evoker drops a totem of undying after all, or because the illagers have power over the undead, the evoker can summon fangs and vexes. The mobestery says they were expelled from the village for their unspeakable activities. Which is interesting when you consider that the only forms of magic villagers use are less sinister. Enchantments, potions, and whatever they do with their workstations to restock their trades. Villagers are also pacifists, and the mobestery says they have big brains and fold their arms possibly as a defensive posture. Illagers are best distinguished by their grey complexion and two big bushy eyebrows. Curiously, the Ravager has a monobrow like the villagers, leading many to believe the Ravager used to be a villager. At one point, Ravagers were even frightened by rabbits, but Jeb had that removed as it didn't fit with the Ravagers lore. He also said the Ravager texture was meant to resemble the Evoker Fangs, suggesting they are related. Many other mobs also have monobrows, Iron Golems, Shulkers, Guardians, and Witches. So perhaps Shulkers are Golems too? They're called End Golems in the code. Witches occupy an odd middle ground, they assist pillagers in raids with potions, but they don't directly attack the villagers. Spiders have an interesting relationship with potions. They are immune to poison, can spawn with potion effects, and the mobestery says cave spider poison tints their skin blue. The mobestery also says the mushrooms on a mushroom's back cause them no apparent discomfort, and that creepers may explode to distribute spores from which new creepers grow. Or they're just evil. The TNT inside the creeper depicted by a lot of merchandise is also confirmed, since the mobestery has a drawing of a creeper that failed to detonate underwater. The explosion radius is slightly smaller since the TNT is. Slimes also spawn at a rate proportional to the amount of moonlight. A new moon will cause no slimes to spawn, but a full moon will cause maximum slime spawning. There's a little bit of realism in Minecraft too. The lily of the valley makes a poisonous suspicious stew to communicate its poisonous in real life. Cookies kill parrots because of the chocolate, 
and wolves attack skeletons for their bones. Let's do one last example, a structure. Chiseled sandstone features a creeper face. This could be because the desert pyramid has a TNT trap. But chiseled red sandstone features a wither silhouette. So if we wanted to make a Badlands pyramid, perhaps we could connect it to the wither somehow. There could be a small dome on top with some glass to suggest the builders experimented with beacons. Or a secret room with soul sand and a wither skeleton skull to teach new players about the wither. Its design could be based on Petra or Hegra. Lava could work there too to strengthen its connection to the nether. See, even a single texture can inspire a massive pyramid. Hopefully you can see that it's very easy to find something to expand upon in Minecraft. If you connect two parts of the game, or strengthen an existing one, creative ideas that would fit into the game quickly emerge. Or you could ask a question about an origin or purpose of something already in Minecraft, and think along the same lines when brainstorming. It's not a foolproof strategy to ensure ideas fit thematically, but it's better than adding anything because Minecraft doesn't make sense. All you need is a little bit of quasi law to structure your idea. You can even discard it if you don't like it, quasi law is never set in cobblestone. Gameplay should always come first, and incomplete or inconsistent quasi law might inspire people to make new theories. What's important is that you have an idea. Thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like. And if you really enjoy what I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Special thanks to Adele, Pymaster651, and Swuff for pledging $5 this month, and extra special thanks to Jabalub and Connor for pledging $10. Patrons and people who Nitro boost the Minecraft Abnormals or Abnormals Mods Discord server get access to builds of secret mods we're developing. We also have a slew of existing vanilla style mods, which you can browse through on our website. If I missed any lore, please let me know but only from in-game evidence, developer quotes, or official blog posts. Those might go into a follow-up video on quasi lore, which will also contain information and theories I felt didn't have enough proof. More video essays and Minecraft Ideas Academy episodes are planned, so if those interest you, subscribe and hit the bell, and soon they should be up for you to enjoy. We also have a subreddit for submitting suggestions, two Twitter pages, and a Discord for brainstorming ideas, showcasing and critiquing art, and talking about Minecraft and mods. It's all in the description down below. Until next time, Stay abnormal.